often, and we'll see how these two teams do in that regard. Yeah, especially at the higher level, pins come at a premium. Chesney will come out in the black singlets with the gold, very Iowa Hawkeyes looking attire. Buford on the other side in sort of the muted garnet and gold. And we are underway, Class 2A, the Eagles and the Yellow Jackets. So glad to have you with us. Little head and arm here in the center. Throw by, no good. We will get you the names of these wrestlers as quick as we are able to do so. I've not seen the weigh-in sheets as of yet. And as you can tell by the volume of the crowd, can be difficult to hear the public address announcer here inside Dubar Gymnasium. These fans are ready to go. They want to see their schools claim a state title in this sport for the first time. Seen a lot of aggressive scrambling, but no two for either side. Started off from a shot from the Buford wrestler that eventually turned into a little head and arm action off of the Whizzer. Tyler Henderson doing. is ranked number four in the state in this weight class for Chesney. Last year he was a third place finisher in the state at 113. And he picks up the first two points for Chesney. some back points as well and maybe more <laughs> near fall makes it 5 nothing in favor of the Eagles <laughs> Buford's wrestler escapes that half Nelson those seven points gotten by Henderson after that beautiful cement mixer off of neutral. Back on top now is Henderson. That takes us to the end of the first period. Nine to one in favor of Henderson and Chesney. First a deferral and now it appears Chesney will start down. Off we go in the start of period number two. Reminder that in order to get the major decision, you need to have an eight-point difference in the match points, which, of course, is what the Eagles have currently. Still a lot of wrestling to go, perhaps. And a fall will end things immediately. Henderson doing well on bottom, trying to work the switch. Now he's trying to get out of this bar. And Tyler, what's the advantage of choosing to be in that bottom position? Well, especially if you're up nine points, now eight points, um, the advantage is that you kind of control the pace. If you want to stay on bottom, you can, but essentially you want to get out as fast as possible, especially as we see Henderson, so that you can get back to neutral. Starting on top, you kind of show all your tricks, and actually I think Henderson maybe should have taken top because we saw as soon as he got out of that near fall position, he immediately ran a half and got more back points. So I wouldn't call it questionable, but bottom is always a very safe choice. As we resume, 56 seconds to go in this second period. No points in this frame as of yet. He remains on the bottom. Chesney was the top seed in the upper state bracket, had a first round bye and then knocked out High Point Academy, Dixie, and the defending state champion Liberty Red Devils to get here. That upper state final, a close one. 36 to 30 the final as Chesney got the better of Liberty for the third time this season. That is no small feat, neither is the escape that Henderson just pulled off. That was a gorgeous combination. Ducks his head out, and then he gets that low, high crotch single. I can see why Henderson is ranked number four in the state at this weight class. He is one of 12 ranked wrestlers that Chesney has, and there are only 14 weight classes. So they have a stacked lineup. So the odds are pretty good. By that metric, that's for sure. Buford has eight of the 14 ranked. 
I think an interesting thing to look at once we get into the heavier weights is the two places that Chesney has holes in the lineup, unranked at 75 and 90. That's where Buford has a number three wrestler in Tanner Sellers at 75 and Michael Jaimez at number three at 190. So that could be a point of contention when we get to the heavier weights. And you've got to imagine if you're Buford at that point, of course, we'll see mathematically where the teams sit at that point, but you've got to be thinking, pin if you can, take the points when you have an advantage. Into the third period, it's still a nine-point lead for Henderson and Chesney. So if this holds, it would be a major decision and four points to the duel. But he's thinking about a little bit more than that. Henderson loves that cement mixer. That's his fourth time throwing at this match. I think if I could pull off a cement mixer, I think I would enjoy that. And now... Closing in as the Buford wrestler fights to keep that second shoulder off the mats. Can he hang on for another minute 15? Good recovery. And now perhaps a reversal as the Buford fans come alive. Wow. As Henderson was approaching on the technical fall, 15 to 1. We see that this Buford wrestler here gets the reversal, sort of throws him over his own shoulder on the cradle, and now Henderson's looking to work the switch. That is a good point. If at any point the match points become a 15-point differential to technical fall and five points in the duel. So a key reversal there by Buford to get it to a 12-point difference. 35 seconds left in this match. I like that move from Henderson, resetting by... You know, not explicitly walking out of bounds, but you want to sneak your way there if you're, in a question, if you're in a questionable position, get back to reps. Big take down there. It's a 14-point differential, and now 17 seconds left for Tyler Henderson to try to get an extra point for his squad. I'd cut him. Cut him and try to get another takedown. Looks like that's the attempt. Won't quite get there. 17-3 to is the match score, and now it's 4 to nothing. Chesney in the dual score. First points of the day for Tyler Henderson. Wow, that was a good match. Henderson controlled it the whole way. He was really working on top. That cement mixer combo, he really likes the head and arm, and you can see that he was working a lot with his arms as well in the switch from the bottom position as we get two new wrestlers coming up to the table. Sitting the mat for the 132 weight class. Well, this is Nate Gardner for Buford in the Garnet and Gold, ranked fifth in the state in this class. Couldn't quite make out who it was for Chesney. It should, in theory, be Wyatt Hawk, but the way I heard the public address announcer speaking toward the at the transition point, it was almost as if Hawk was the wrestler we just saw as opposed to Henderson. So do apologize if that was the case. Again, very hard for us to hear. We do not have access to the weigh-in sheets. Hopefully we will get, get them at some point. But we will try to provide you the best coverage that we can despite the limitations. So thanks for bearing with us. I will say, Gardner for Buford here has the height advantage. Wouldn't be surprised if he was working some Smith singles or some ankle picks. If he did, I'd presume him to do it off the whistle. Who knows, maybe he's a big neutral guy. Doesn't look like it, neither are working anything significant. I believe the name I heard here for Chesney was De La Cruz. We aren't privy to full team rosters either, so do apologize for that. 
will say it would make sense if indeed Wyatt Hawk is the wrestler we just saw for Chesney last year. He was the state runner-up in 126, had been wrestling at 132 much of this season, but would be unsurprising to see a move like that. It's not surprising at all. A lot of coaches will shift kids towards a class they're more used to if they've wrestled previously, especially for postseason. As we get towards individuals, a move by Dela Cruz, goodness. First Huge points of this return. match. Coming toward the tail end of the period. On the first is in the books at 2 nothing Chesney. 4 nothing Eagles in the duel to this point, following the major, major decision at 126 that got us started. Maybe Chesney has just moved their whole lineup down one weight class, which means we might see Henderson at 120. Something to keep an eye on for sure. Told you Buford on some level could be considered a bit of a Cinderella here. They did beat number six Bishop England a Mild upset, seven versus six in the first round of the state tournament. Then pulled the upset over second-ranked Edisto at 56 to 15, no less. So Buford really had a point to prove in that one. And then ended up getting to host the lower state final because the top seed and defending lower state champion North Central was upset by fourth-seeded Timberland. And so then Timberland ended up going to Buford in the lower state final. 39 to 30 was the final as the Yellow Jackets edged out the Wolves and avenged their loss to Timberland from a couple of years ago. Timberland, the 2021-22 lower state champs. <laughs> Good scramble from De La Cruz. And it all works from that shin wizard too on that shot that wasn't quite set up from Nate Gardner. So far, so good for Chesney here at 4-1. Gardner tried to work up Peterson there, but it didn't quite go over. seconds left in the second period and keep in mind here the way the way this lineup is shaking out that this is a weight class that Buford because of how Chesney has run it should have the advantage you've got a fifth ranked wrestler in the state Nate Gardner against an unranked in Dela Cruz so an important next two minutes and 15 seconds here for the Yellow Jackets all right now Dela Cruz continues to control the tenor of things as the second period concludes. And I was about to say, if you're Dela Cruz here, your job is don't get pinned, but maybe he's going for the win there with a little bit of a reversal to end off. On to the third we go as the Let's Go Eagles chance break out from the Chesney crew. Two more for Dela Cruz. And now at a five-point differential, Nate Gardner's got to go to work here for Buford. There's only so much work you can get to from bottom. What are you thinking in this position? A reversal and then try to get some back points? No. You, you got to get back to neutral. Well, if you're Gardner, you have to get back to neutral. You have the height advantage. Try to work for De La Cruz's legs, especially those ankles, like I said. Ankle picks, Smith singles all the way down. Well, he's gotten to neutral, gets the one point for an escape, still trails 6-2 to two with a minute 15 on the clock. Next takedown, pretty important here for Gardner and Buford. Nothing here. And they come out with 58 on the clock. Dela Cruz, really impressive. What he's doing is he's getting into the head position of Gardner, not letting him use those long levers to keep him at bay, instead opting for head and arm. As we see right there, he gets head, the head right in the crook of his shoulder, 
so he can control this position. Gardner should be keeping his arms out instead, keeping him at bay. The elevator up, can it come back down? Yes, it can. That's two for Buford. 30 seconds left here. Yellow Jackets fans are frenzied all of a sudden. Six to four, now two more. We're tied up at six. But like then two more again for Chesney here on the reversal. Gardner was working a half Nelson and Dela Cruz just popped his head out and came out on top. What a move after Buford pulled up four points in about 20 seconds. Eight seconds left. Dela Cruz in advantage, but now the put down. Two more on the board. We are potentially tied at eight. Potentially some back points at the end for Gardner. Does he get them? He does. What a turn of events as Buford takes the decision. Gardner just flipped him over and got that half going, and that ended in three back points for Gardner and a decision win. And after Dela Cruz owned things for about five minutes or so, all of a sudden some last-minute moves from Gardner, and Buford's on the board. I will say, though, not the worst possible outcome for Chesney, far and away. Like I said, if you're Dela Cruz, you can't give up a pin there. I think as an unranked wrestler going against number five, he did his job. So the Chesney wrestler is clear in this case, and certainly unsurprising, the number one ranked wrestler in the state at the 138 weight class, Thad Gerstenacker. Mason Deese of Buford is ranked fourth in this class as a region champion, but I never made out the name that was announced. One would imagine Deese would go up here against Gerstenacker, but again, cannot confirm what we cannot hear. And we can't hear very much, let's put it that way. We have a near fall that Gerstenacker puts down for three points off yeah. the near fall. Stopped just outside. We saw that a um, little bit of a discrepancy between college and high school with uh, what actually out of bounds is. In high school, I'm not quite sure if they keep that rule where you need to have one foot inside the ring, but it looks like Gerstenacker just let his plant foot up and they called it out. Gersten Acker going to work here, trying to prove that number one ranking is everything it's meant to be. He won the state at the individual level last year in this class, so this is his class to lose. And he is one of three Gersten Ackers that we anticipate seeing in this match. I don't think I've ever seen a Gersten Acker in my life, and now I'll see three. Thad and his twin brother Quentin are sophomores and then their older brother Gunther the senior played a major role in getting the Eagles here as we'll get into that in a little bit. What we have here is the first pin of the day. Thad Gerstenacker responsible. That looked like it hurt. Gerstenacker getting his legs in there and uh, the Buford wrestler, we saw a little bit of grimacing in the face as Gerstenacker just ran the half with legs in and as someone who's been there, not fun. You can speak from experience. I can speak from glad I never felt it. So it's 10 to 3 Chesney following the day's first pin, and now we move to 144. And I believe this to be our second Gerstenacker of the day. It is. Quentin in 144. He's ranked third in the state. Getting a name I didn't quite recognize from Buford. Something along the lines of Ainsler, but 
Again, do apologize for the lack of full rosters here. Nonetheless, we'll see Quentin Gerstenacker go to work. State qualifier at 132 last year, wrestling up at 144 this year. A love tap there. Mm -hmm. So far in three classes, we've seen a major decision, a decision, and a pin. Kirsten Acker, when he's in those positions with that leg up, he's got to try to get his head on the inside of this Buford wrestler's quad and use his head to buck him down into the mat. Solid takedown that time. Worked his angles, found a point of attack, and went after it. Ooh, as he goes for a stack. Out of bounds they go. That really nifty head and arm stack with uh, with the bar in from Gerstenak. You don't see that a whole lot because usually rolling your opponent over your own body like that isn't ideal, but I like that for him. It looks like he's got a lot of control. It looks like Chesney in general loves to work these bars, these cement mixers, and just about anything in head and arm positions. It's a disciplined Chesney team that has worked hard throughout this season. Oh my goodness. Kirsten Acker wanted it and got all of it. And head coach John Rents talked about how earlier this season they went to a tournament out of state in Tennessee, placed in the top five. That was a moment he said that this team really started to realize what it was capable of and that his kids took control of practice themselves. The accountability just rocketed up, and then he didn't even have to worry about running a lot of those practices. They knew what they were up against. They knew what they could do, and the rest of the season has gone in their favor. Now can they get the state title for the first time? That is the last question to be answered. Odds look pretty good right now. So far, a solid start. A lot of good wrestlers coming down the pipe here for Chesney. As they lead 10 to 3 in the duel and 2 to nothing here at 144. Surprised to see Quentin only come out of that uh, match with a two point lead. It looks like he was in control the whole time, but not a whole lot of scoring. As he gets out on an escape, and it's an extra point. Certainly, Chesney expected to win at this class. And then that's when things will start to get a little interesting because at 150, you've got a Buford wrestler at Antonio Amos ranked second. Chesney has one ranked eighth. And then a couple classes down the road, we get to those two where Chesney has no ranked wrestler. 175 and 190 are going to be a point of contention for the Chesney Eagles. As, like I said, two number three ranked for Buford there. You are watching live coverage of the South Carolina High School League State Wrestling Championships on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash SCHSL is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of South Carolina high school playoff action. Just over the halfway point of the match, 56 seconds on the clock in period two. Remains a pretty low score here, 3-0 in favor of Quinton Gerstenacker and Chesney. Been a lot of sizing up between these two. Yeah, a lot of hand fighting. It looks like they both like tying up because we haven't seen a whole lot of shots except for a really nice high crotch by Gerstenacker in the first that eventually did lead to two. He's trying another one, and he's got two more. I really like the patience I'm seeing out of Gerstenacker knowing when to go after it and then being decisive. And just like his brother, it looks like he's trying to put a boot in. It looks like they both like those half Nelsons with legs in. The score will be five to nothing as we go to the third. 
Fourth weight class of 14 in this duel. 10 to 3, Chesney is the duel score. As both of these teams try to claim their first state title in wrestling in program history. I think Buford just went neutral on their decision, which I don't hate, but I feel like Gerstenacker's had the advantage in neutral the whole time. He's scored the only two takedowns of the match. No doubt. And I think this is the counterpart to what you were saying in the 132 on the flip side for Dela Cruz of Chesney. It was the goal to, again, minimize points on the other side. If you're Buford right now, if you can avoid the pin, if you can even keep this to a regular decision, that is a big benefit to the Yellow Jackets. Don't get pinned, don't get teched. <laughs> Minute 20 to go, still only a five-point differential. So if you're Gerstenacker trying to at least get three more points and get it to a major. Final minute. Called out. I don't think Gerstenacker, Gerstenacker liked that because he did still have both of his feet in, but ref's discretion here in high school. Got to imagine there will be another big Gerstenacker move in the final 30 seconds. How impactful will it be? Can Buford hang on? Here he goes. There it is, two more. He's got to work, he's got to get to eight. If no more points in the next 15 seconds, it's oh, only gonna, a regular decision. He's gonna cut him, he wants another takedown. Makes sense mathematically, now 7-1. Can he get the other takedown and get it to 9-1? Four seconds left, and... I don't think he'll get there. Stall warning was called. It doesn't matter. Buford will take it. As Quentin Gerstenacker picks up only a regular decision and three points for Chesney. It's okay. The Buford wrestler was upset about the stalling, but it was his first one of the match, so no points come into the way of Gerstenacker. It's okay. But that might be big for Buford, only seeing a regular decision there. for Chesney. All right, we do have clarity on these two. This is Mason D, so he was not the one to go up against Gerstenacker, which appeared, I think, the way that head coach Garrett Plyler's strategy was in that last class. He's going up against Malachi Hill of Chesney, so this is an advantage Buford on paper. Hill is ranked eighth in this class in the state for Chesney. Meanwhile, Mason D's again wrestling up a little bit. 138 much of the year, was fourth in that class last year and fourth again this season. So we'll see if he can handle the higher weight class in this situation. He's a region champ. But the first two points belong to Malachi Hill of Chesney who seems pretty aggressive and physical in the early goings. He does and despite the rating difference, that's two different weight classes. That's apples to oranges. I mean, 12 pounds is a lot and someone that's used to wrestling 150 as opposed to 138 could be a big disadvantage for Deese and I think that that's probably why Hill is on top. He just has that good weight distribution that Deese isn't used to. What do you make of that strategy then to wrestle Deese two classes up? Um, I'm going to be very blunt and say I don't like it. We'll see how it pans out. So far advantage Malachi Hill. I think that Deese would have been better going up against Quentin Gerstenacker had he only wrestled up one weight class. 
as we saw, just a decision from an unranked wrestler. What what could have Dee's done? Maybe even sneaked out a win there, but hindsight, 2020. So far, Dee's yet to get any leverage going against Hill. Dee's did say at the press conference on Thursday that his team has had to wrestle a lot of tougher teams throughout the season, gave us great experience, that our coaches have pushed us really hard, prepared us for these moments. We'll see how his prep pays off as we have a stoppage 40 seconds, excuse me, a minute and 40 seconds in. Another thing I liked that Dee said was, our fans are great. We'll have more fans on the road than home teams, which I think that could be true. It's a pretty good distribution between both, but pre-match, these Buford fans were loud. Yes, indeed they were. Traveled 72 miles south-southwest to get here. From the small town of Lancaster and the Charlotte environs. Chesney a little bit further, 114 miles from home. Either way, small town pride on full display here, and one of these small towns is going to get to enjoy the fruits of the state title. Reminder that today's event is available to download. Just click the digital copy button under the event video player to download a digital copy of the event right to your computer. Blood timeout has been resolved, so we resume with 20 seconds left in the first period. Malachi Hill still on top and in control. Malachi trying to work a pump handle tilt. Did not think that I would see that on this level. I used to use that back in the day. Did you? A really good move. Uh, you usually see it at lighter weights, not 150, but I that, that put a big smile on my face. You can see it. I'm cheesing. And that's one way to do it. So Dees had the chance to choose. He deferred. Hill chose bottom, changing things, and immediately picked up a two-point reversal. That was one of the fastest switches I've ever seen in my life. This remains all Malachi Hill and... Rollover cradle attempt. A good job by Dees to avoid the full effect of that. Now again, this is a different task in front of Mason Dees, a region champ, but now it's almost defense mode. If he can pull off some kind of move here, it certainly would help his cause, but at least if the tenor of this match continues, he just wants to minimize the points that Chesney will get. Score is 13-3 in the duel in favor of Chesney. Three of the four weight classes have gone in the Eagles' favor so far. The top-ranked team in the state tries to finish the job. It looks like Hill's pace has slowed down just a little bit, still maintaining great control, driving with the feet. He really wants an over-the-top cradle. You can see it. seconds to go as they reset. I think I've found a way for Dees to get an advantage. When Malachi Hill goes for those over-the-top cradles, he hangs really high on the shoulder blades of Dees. He's got to try to buck him up and over and try to maybe settle on top with a half Nelson. A reversal into a pin. Unlikely, but possible. Speaking of D's shoulder blades, looks like a little bit of blood there, at least as far as we can see. Haven't officially stopped the blood time came in the nasal region of Hill back in the first period. Yeah, he is bleeding from that right shoulder. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears in this sport. Tell me about it, Brett. <laughs> can only imagine. 
Let's see how Dees approaches this third period. First time on top of the whole match. Well, he was for about, I don't know, two seconds <laughs> to start the second period. Hill made short work of that. I guess you're right. I forgot he started <laughs> the second on top because Hill's switch was just, I blinked and he was in neutral. Put that car in a different gear. Thought a shoe came off for a second. Dee's ripping away, now an escape. Another point on the board for Hill and Chesney. It's 5-0. Still decision category. We have seen just one pin, one major decision so far. A lot of very well contested matches so far in this duel. Exactly what you want to see. These two schools have not been here very often. It's the first time Buford's ever been here to state. Only the second time ever for Chesney. And one of them will win it all for the first time. Gorgeous high crotch from, from Hill. Caught Deese reaching. Overextended his arms just a little bit up top. And he came in. Now closing in on that major decision. He needs one more point to do it, does Hill. And he has 30 seconds with which to work. Head coach John Rent stepping up to the edge of the mat, shouting out loudly. So too are the Eagle fans. Coach Hill. Rentz wants Hill to cut him. He's screaming cut him and giving the international sign for get out of top. And again, this would be to force the escape and then get the takedown to get it to eight. Hill has not answered that call. But he does take out the region champ, Mason Dees, and pick up a decision for Chesney. And I mean, Rent still looks, looks pleased. If, if you can at least stay on top and control it, maybe cutting, though, you know, you want as many points for the team as you can get, a win is still a win. That'll move us up to the 157 weight class. We'll see how these schools play it out. So once again, Buford will send out a wrestler wrestling up, although this time it's only a one class difference instead of two. This is Antonio Amos, who again has been ranked second in the state throughout this season at 150. He's now wrestling at 157, and he goes up against the fourth ranked wrestler in the state in that class, Chesney's Jesse Cosby. This should be fun. This should be fun, especially as we can see both of these wrestlers have a lot of length. We saw those long shots, that first one from Amos. Today's duel is also available for all subscribers via the NFHS Network Live mobile app for Apple and Android devices. Download the app from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store today to start watching live games wherever you are. And wherever you are today, we appreciate you being with us. Hope you're having as much fun as we are. Amos and Cosby, who gets the first takedown? It belongs to Amos of Buford. Cosby, when he was caught up before the takedown, tried to go for a chin whip. I was on the edge of my seat to see a reversal like that, but nothing doing. As we're back to head and arm. That's an escape for Chesney. A lot of grappling. Not a lot of leverage in this match so far. Antonio Amos finished fourth in the state in this class last year. Again, ranked second, or excuse me, in the class below, I should say, and ranked second in that class again this year. Picks up another takedown and two more. Four to one, he leads. His team trails 16 to three in the duel. This is weight class number six of 14. And it looks 
looks like wrestling up is no problem for Amos. Seems a bit more comfortable. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those weight classes where it's okay, only a seven pound difference. Still a lot in wrestling, but you know, that's a good meal and a half. What was your key to proper nutrition as a wrestler? Because certainly sports nutrition, obviously critical across the board, but arguably in no other sport is it as essential to what you're trying to do than here. When you can eat, eat well. And that's all I'm going to say. Fair enough. I've had one or two lunches where a cup of ice is a meal. So when you're allowed to have an actual good dinner, take it. And it's, it, it's the best thing you've ever tasted. After like a few days of having to cut, I was never terrible. I never had to wear trash bags or anything. But eat when you can is my, my biggest advice. What class did you typically wrestle at? 26. Okay. Five years. Cosby goes after Amos's legs. Amos has him butterflied backward. A reset with 46 seconds to go here in the second period. I like how we're at 157 and we're still seeing a lot of aggressive shot taking. Sometimes that can taper off at the end, but also I have to keep in mind that this is state championship level, so there's going to be a lot of offensive aggression, especially when scoring points comes at a premium like this. Amos goes low, picks up two. He leads by six. Looks like he was going for the fireman's carry, but he just settled for the two, which is respectable, especially when this is a match that you have to win. And it would be big for Buford too, even though, like you said, feels like a must win just based on mathematics at this point. But Cosby is wrestling in his class, Amos wrestling up. And Cosby, one of the best in the state at it. So it would be an impactful win for Amos if he can get it. Two minutes to go, he leads by six. I think Amos's job here is to get to at least seven. You need a major decision because then that's two matches between. You can get a regular decision and then a pin and then you're tied. He's called for an illegal headlock there. And he knew it too based on his body language. Yep. He rolled over, accidentally got both arms around the head instead of getting the arm trapped. For extra context too, and again, we'll see how these coaches strategize, but if you look ahead at what should happen over the next three classes, Buford has nobody realistically who can go up at 165 against Gunther Gerstenacker, who is very, very good in that class, unless Gerstenacker wrestles up against Tanner Sellers in 175, but that really wouldn't make sense based on the rest of the lineup. And then you get to the two where Chesney doesn't have a ranked wrestler, Buford does. So the next three almost appear Chesney, Buford, Buford. Of course, you can't guarantee that, but that's at least the way it looks as we forecast ahead how things can set up. Puts the impetus even further on Amos to get this done now. I think he showed he's only got one more point to get to the major. One minute to do it. Stalling called on bottom. Amos working hard, trying to get something to get him that extra point. Cosby not letting him. Buford fans rising to their feet as Amos tried to flip him over. Cosby would not let him. 29 seconds left. John Rent saying, just hang on. Keep steady. Amos is trying to work this bar so bad. He's got the head lever going, trying to get that left arm 
of Cosby so that he can bar it up, but nothing doing. Cosby doing a great job fighting it off. Chesney sideline clapping it up. They realize what's happening here. Time will run out. This is a decision in favor of Buford and a hard-earned only decision allowed by Chesney. And that's... That could have been big. Good job by, by uh, Cosby to fight off another stalling call as well because he gets a second one of those and that's a major for Buford instead. I thought that maybe it might have been called as he was trying to creep out. Sometimes refs like to hit that, but, but good job. So 16-6, to six, the score in the duel in favor of Chesney as we move to 165. And before we hit the halfway points of this duel, we're glad to be joined here in our perch above Dubard Gymnasium by the commissioner of the South Carolina High School League, Dr. Jerome Singleton. Dr. Singleton, here we are again. What a way to start this wrestling duel state championship. This is a fun one today. Truly fantastic. Every, every match uh, looked like it's going down to points as opposed to pins. I think we only showed one pin so far, didn't we? Absolutely. Yeah. It seems like every time we come here, we get a lot of pins, a lot of aggressive wrestlers, and we've seen that today, but yeah. just been highly contested That's and of course, we get to see one of these schools bring it home for the first time. That's absolutely, always exciting. Absolutely, and that's always great. Anytime we get an opportunity for the change out where another group gets a chance to create a memory for their community. Absolutely. So speaking of memories, we're into the winter championship season. A lot of cool things coming down the pipe. Give me a snapshot of where we are for the league right now. Well, actually, we, we just finished... Uh doing wrestling at the middle school level. Had individual, not individuals, but uh, uh, invitationals at two different sites, and that went very well for us. So uh, the sport of wrestling is truly growing. Now, uh, as far as everything else going with us, you know we're going to have basketball finals beginning uh, at, uh, in, a, in a few days. Uh, we're looking forward to taking care of that, but the office has been so busy dealing with everything else. You know, in, in the wintertime, we deal a lot with um, uh, looking at our rules and regulations and any changes that need to be made there. So we're spending a lot of time reviewing our handbook and, and, and seeing where we are with that. And then, of course, realignment was this year. So it's, just, it's been busy in the office. Yeah, we hear a lot about uh, college realignment, but it happens at the high school level, <laughs> too. Every two years. Certainly, yes. certainly something to manage. So you mentioned the growth of wrestling and, and the middle school success. Tell me a little bit about what you've seen from the state. We've seen you know, the upper state have so many great programs. Lower state's been intentional about trying to work it. What have you seen from your end? Truly, there's growth among them, but I think it starts at the grassroots level, which is the middle school level, and we've got more and more middle schools that are getting involved with it. That's going to truly help. I think out in Myrtle Beach, they've got several middle schools that have programs. And actually, they almost have enough that they can have a tournament themselves. So there's, and of course, the upper state has always had it, but uh, Charleston area is trying to produce some, and we're just looking forward to that piece being there, because in order for this sport to really take off, it's going to really have to continue to work at the grassroots level, and we haven't even begun the conversation about uh, uh, women Women wrestling or girls wrestling. And we're hoping to get growth there. Right now we offer an individual, but you know, we're hoping to get where we got a team championship there too. Absolutely. Excited for the individuals coming up as well up at Anderson? Absolutely. We got the individuals coming up for the, for the male and the female. That's always a fun one because uh, more and more schools have the opportunity to be represented. Today we got two schools represented per per uh, per championship. When we get to the individuals, then there's multiple schools represented. Lots to look forward to, for yes, sure. Sir. Dr. Singleton, appreciate your leadership of the league, another high-class event, and we're excited to be here. We appreciate you. As always, we always appreciate what you do. Thank you. Thank you very much. That is the commissioner of the SCHSL, Dr. Jerome Singleton, as we continue here with the seventh of 14 weight classes in this Class 2A duel state championship. The Chesney Eagles leading the Buford Yellow Jackets 16-6 in the duel and 8-2 in this match. Chesney once again in the black and gold. Buford in the garnet and gold, shall we say. And this is Sam Watson for Buford and presumed to be Gunther Gerstenacker for Chesney. Gerstenacker working hard, trying to get the second pin of this duel. He is close. Already has a nine-point advantage in match points. Near fall tacks on three more. So he's only three points away from a tech fall, too. Ref calls stalemate. Now Gunther 
Thurston Acker. We told you he had a big upset win in the semifinals, the upper state finals, against Liberty the other night. Went up against Ian Valacio of the Red Devils, who had had a winning streak against Thurston Acker head-to-head. -head. And in the third-to-last match, in a match that ended 36-30 to in favor of Chesney, Thurston Acker beat him 9-8 to for a critical decision. And that was one of the things that really tipped it in the Eagles' favor to get them here. He told the Boiling Springs Sports Journal after the fact that I knew I could beat Valacio because I had put in the work throughout the season. It gave me confidence. I knew it was a matter of time, and he got it done. John Renz added after the fact that Kirsten Acker took it upon himself as one of the senior leaders of this team. He recognized the moment and delivered. To get Chesney here. Well, I think that senior leadership is very key, especially when you have two of your own younger brothers on the team. No kidding. Leader in the household as well as the gym. He's going for the power half, trying to get the boots in like his younger brother, Thad. Seems like this whole family has a similar style, which is uh, physical and imposing, to say the least. You gotta love it, a, a signature move running in the family, right? And it seems to be a pretty good move. It's working. It's Sam Watson calls bottom for Buford. Again, both of these teams had very close semifinal victories. 36-30, Chesney over Liberty, 39-30, Buford over Timberland. And those two schools, by the way, were also in the state championships the last two years. Again, Liberty won it all last year. Timberland lost to 96 in 2022. Potentially dangerous called on the power half there. Obviously a major decision appears likely at this point. The question is, can Gerstenacker pick up an extra point and get the tech fall? It's a particularly passionate student section of Chesney fans on the first two rows behind the scorer's table, and they're making some extra noise trying to get Gunther over the top. Meanwhile, it's Watson who ends up inadvertently over the top, quite literally. Yeah, Gerson Acker just couldn't quite settle back in on that cradle as I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to throw out a big move here. But Watson hanging on to that leg well. Might get called for stalling though. 20 seconds. Gerson Acker in an awkward position. Stalemate again, nine seconds. That might be what he needs to make a last move. He's going optional start. He is going for a big move. Any point will get him the tech fall. Seven seconds. And not quite. Yeah. So it's a major decision, and both fan bases will be happy about how that panned out. You saw Gersten Acker throw the triangle up. He went optional start instead of opting for referee's position. That's... That's what you do when you want a big move. It, you get a little bit of distance from your opponent's body so that you can come out in front and go for some kind of throw, which was the strategy, but it didn't, didn't work to the full effect. So we're at the halfway point of this duel. It's 20 to six Chesney.
believe I heard the name Austin Bickford for, for Chesney. And I did not hear the name Tanner Sellers for Buford, who would be expected in this class. We'll see what happens here. It is possible that Buford could be wrestling everybody else up along the way, which would put Sellers at 190, Jaimez at 215 against Timmy Reznichenko, and Tucker Bone maybe in the heavyweights against Aiden Allen. Some gutsy calls here by Garrett Plyler. We'll see how this pans out. Beautiful high crotch from Bigford. One thing's for sure, regardless of how this goes, Buford really needs points in these next couple classes before some of the Chesney heavyweights come back out. But right now, it's belonging to the Eagles and Bickford. out the box. And the escape. Chesney has won five of the seven matches in this one so far. We have seen just one pin. Thad Gerstenacker responsible for that at 138. We are also now out of Gerstenackers. We've seen all three. I don't know, a surprise Gerstenacker might run out of those gym doors like it's, um, like it's that wedding scene in Shrek. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? First period down, 4-1 to one in favor of Bickford. You are watching live coverage of the South Carolina High School League State Wrestling Championships on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash SCHSL is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of South Carolina high school playoff action. Got to give a shout out to these two head coaches and their history with their respective schools. John Rents for Chesney is the only head coach this program has ever known since its inception in 2008. He's been working at the school in various capacities for 26 years. And he has built a staff that is almost entirely composed of his own alumni, wrestlers under him that are now coaching under him. Meanwhile, for Garrett Plyler on the other side, he himself wrestled for Buford and was an individual state champion in the heavyweight category back in 1997. Back when 275 was a weight class and not 285 like it is now. The nuances of the sport. Beat a wrestler from Edisto High back then. And again, Buford as a team beat Edisto two rounds ago in this year's state tournament. Going high. The Buford wrestlers got to buck him off. Take him forward. Oh, took him too forward. Just over halfway through here at 175. 6 to 2, Chesney make it 6 3 following the escape. This team loves cement mixers. That's two. This is more. It's six. When you looked at this match at the beginning, this duel, I should say, you would not have picked a pin for Chesney at 175. That is massive. No, you would not have. I mean, at the beginning, I said that that's the whole of this roster, and um, 
Shout out to Coach Rents for proving me wrong. So this is Michael Jaimez wrestling at 190 for Buford, which is his class throughout the season, ranked third in the state. I did not catch the name of the Chesney wrestler, although it was not anyone on our radar. It's a 20 point differential now in the dual score. Chesney 26, Buford six with six weight classes to go. And two points right off the bat here for Jaimez, and you know he's gotta be thinking six. He's getting close already. My goodness. The writhing on the mats. Jaimez working. Can he get the second shoulder down? Yellow Jackets fans want it and they got it. Jaimez immediately spins his man down and gets him in a butcher. We saw a lot of wriggling on the Chesney side, but kept him tight, kept his feet planted. And now, this match doesn't look so far away for the Yellow Jackets. So the team's trade pins, five weight classes to go. This is one to circle right here. Two top five wrestlers in the state wrestling in their class. For Chesney, the fifth ranked Timmy Resnichenko. For Buford, the second ranked Tucker Bone. It does not get much better than this. And this one will go a long way to deciding this duel. Bone picks up the first two on a takedown. And look at the energy, Tyler, that he's coming out with. He is absolutely... <laughs> he almost got in the ref's position a little too quick, but... He is moving fast, and we can see maybe from Reznichenko, not exactly sluggishness, but not quite used to this pace maybe, as we've seen this whole Chesney team kind of low, slow, methodical, but when met with this sort of manic energy from Bone, you Bone either got to adapt or fall. Bone is only a sophomore, and he put on a lot of weight from last year. He wrestled at 182 a year ago, was a state qualifier at that class but now is proven to be one of the best in the state here at 2.15 as they go out. Reznichenko in a bit of an uncomfortable position. Two points scored so far, and those came in the first five seconds on an immediate takedown by Bone. Reznichenko has done well to slow the pace since then. Bone trying to work up, but Reznichenko doing a good job of keeping those arms outstretched, not letting him curl his wrists back. Work those, those bars or those tilts. Eric Plyler able to easily communicate with Bone this time just based on where they exited the circles right along the Buford sideline. Great stand-up from Reznichenko. Straight in the head and arm. He'll take one as the first period concludes. If I've gathered anything from these Chesney Eagles, it's that they love tying up. We've seen cement mixers from just about every single person on this team. We just saw one for a pin. 
a little bit ago, but back to Rhett's position now. Reznichenko working right with him. Reznichenko tried to slide out, but Bone did a really good job of keeping that bar trapped. Looks like that's been the main method of offense for both teams on top, other than, like I said, that cement for the Chesney Eagles. way through this match. Three minutes in, three to go as they come out again. A stall call goes against Bone. What do you make of it? Fair, but kind of, I don't know. It's fair for the situation, but I think that with being out of bounds, I think either you let him go out of bounds or you just let him wrestle through it. would be a point, correct? Yes. All of a sudden, the near fall counts. And Reznichenko a bit shaken up. He's taking his time out. No, no he's not. Saw the ref, little finger twirl, but... I think John Rents wants him to take a bit of a longer time out. Yeah. We'll take this opportunity to remind you that today's event is available to download. Just click the digital copy button under the event video player to download a digital copy of the event right to your computer. It's the fifth to last weight class in... We were just forecasting a few minutes ago and said that the next three should be Chesney, Buford, Buford. It was really Chesney, Chesney, Buford. But we'll take a look at what we see coming up. Aiden Allen certainly to go in the heavyweight for Chesney. Buford doesn't have anyone unless, again, we can't imagine that Tanner Sellers would be wrestling up that much. So got to favor Chesney there. Eli Barnhill would be the one to go, presumably at 106 for Chesney as it flips back around. Buford's got a few heavy hitters at 113 and 120, but might it be too late before they get there? Tucker Bone has to get points here for the Yellow Jackets, one would think, or Buford may be in trouble. Right now he has the advantage at 4-1, but it would only be a regular decision to this point. If Chesney wins this match in any way, shape, or form, Buford would need three pins to have a one-point lead, and they'd still have one match left in this duel. So you're saying there Excuse would be me. a chance. Two matches left. There's a chance. Two periods in the books, one to go. Buford fans showing some love to Tucker Bone. Got to give a lot of credit to Timmy Reznichenko because, again, the way that this match started, Bone came out hot. He got two points immediately. He's only gotten two points since, and Reznichenko's largely stalemated him. Well, I think Reznichenko's just settled into the pace. I don't think he expected Bone to come out guns a blazing like that. An escape for Bone gives him a 5 1 edge. And it looks like Bone has gotten tired a little more so than Reznichenko because it looks like Reznichenko is a little heftier. So I think that moving all that weight for Bone kind of took a toll. Reznichenko rather also a sophomore like Bone. These two may see each other for the next few years. Good sprawl from Bone. How a 
aggressive do you get if you're bone right now? One minute to go. Very. Um, I think that you should... Well, you can't get that aggressive when, you know, you're the one that's taking the toll of a shot right now. He's got to spin behind as fast as possible. There you go. Picks up two more. The difference is six. And now he'll look to get another pair of points. Went for a head lever now, trying to get that bar. 35 seconds to run a bar is a lot of time. Chesney starting to get loud. They realize what's happening too. As Bone continues to work, but Reznichenko will sit in that position all day long. 15 seconds left. Bone should be on his feet instead of his knees. Get more weight. There you go. Probably too little, too late. It is a decision in favor of Bone, a worthy bout between those two. And three points in the duel for Buford. Both fan bases showing some love to their combatants and with good reason. Now Chesney only, lo only up 11. Buford has made it a match in what we assumed to be the stronger part of their weight classes. Now as we get into the heavyweight bout, it's going to be the question of Aiden Allen versus who? I believe I heard of McKinney for Buford. This is Aiden Allen, though, for Chesney, who was a state qualifier here at 285 last year, ranked second in the state this year. I have a feeling he's going to want a lot of points. Yeah, especially as he goes immediately for the tie-up. I'd assume that he's going to go for probably a big throw. If not a headlock, then maybe a cement mixer, as we've seen every one of his teammates attempt. Describe for me a little bit more about the technique of the cement mixer, for those who may not be as familiar. The cement mixer is a specific move that Chesney has been doing for about all of these weight classes where when you're in a head and arm scenario, you have your opponent's head tucked under your arm and you use the other arm to go under their shoulder on the same side to drive them over onto their back. I don't know why it's called a cement mixer, but it's a really cool name, so we keep it. Absolutely. I don't think you're going to find another sport that has cooler terminology than this one. Take down on the board for Allen. Everybody on their feet from the Chesney Eagles side. John Rent said after their upper state final win over Liberty, our crowd had a lot to do with the win tonight. Every time the Red Devils got a little momentum, our crowd got into it and our kids fought harder. It feels like that's what they're trying to do again here. Buford has won the last two classes. Aiden Allen went for a bow and arrow cradle right there. Not a move you see from heavyweights typically, but ooh, now he's going for the butcher trying to lock it in. Back to the cradle. That's the end of the first. And you got to wonder, how long can McKinney hold on? Allen using a lot of leverage in those first two minutes. And McKinney defers. I also think the longer Allen is on top, the more tired McKinney's going to get. He's got to see if he can control him here and keep Allen on the bottom because if he escapes, it could spell danger. Here's danger. Good recovery by McKinney. As Allen slips the bar in. Three near fall points, seven nothing in favor of Allen. It's the second time today we've seen an epically quick reversal by Chesney. The 
Chesney stands chanting, he's a baby, to McKinney. Wow. Can't make out their latest rendition. They're a creative bunch. Yeah, and there's a lot of them, which spells uh, maybe not the best for the mental fortitude of those Buford Yellow Jackets. We know, again, a small town of Chesney, 114 miles away, nestled in the upstate west of Gaffney. You know what this means to them, and so much so that they had a softball scrimmage today that they canceled. They wanted the softball players, they wanted the softball parents and families to come down here and be a part of this moment for the wrestling team. And many, it appears, have answered the call. Allen trying to lock in that power half again. Same way those Gerstenackers did, except his power half doesn't have boots. Second period down. Again, credit McKinney. He was on the cusp of being pinned and found a way out. Even if he gets teched instead of pinned, it's still a win. And a good job controlling right off the bat. Allen can't flip this one. Still only regular decision territory for now. Allen needs one more point to change that. Good control by McKinney so far here in the third. Oh, the switch, though, from Allen as he gets back out. We've seen that as the primary defensive move for these Chesney Eagles is the switch, just arm over arm, and then you hit the shoulder to get back out. So now with a nine-point edge, major decision would be the result if it ended right now. Minute 19 left. That would take this to a 30-15 to 15 dual score with three to go. If you do the math at that point, then Buford would need some pins and tech falls combining. Yeah, I mean, after this, you only have three matches left. If Chesney wins, you know, from a major as it is now, that's 30. You need 15 points in three matches. That's at least three techs in a row. We've only seen three pins in this duel. Five decisions, make that four, excuse me, five decisions and two major decisions. 18 seconds left. McKinney is hung in there. And they may be the two point difference that Buford needs to at least keep its hopes alive for now. But it's Chesney that's feeling the enthusiasm as they pick up a major decision at 285. You can see Renz pumping his fist by the bench. They're already celebrating. They like their chances. I don't know, though. When you get to 113 and 120, you have Isaiah Baker at number two and Mason Knight at number two for Buford. I think it's all going to come down to this 106 match. It appears so. Well, and that's why they were celebrating because Buford didn't have anybody to wrestle at 106. Eli Barnhill wins via forfeit, and that clinches the duel for Chesney. I am in awe. Mouth agape. You, there should be no situation in which you go into a state duel that you don't have at least a body to throw at every weight class. Wow. So there you 
go. Mathematically, this one's in the books. Chesney is going to win the state championship for the first time ever, but we will play it out at this level. Sometimes you see teams forfeit out at this point, but you can't when you're at state. You've got to give people their time of day. And in particularly in Buford's perspective, when they've got two seniors in their final dual match about to go, and two very good ones in Isaiah Baker and Mason Knight, both ranked second in their respective classes. And a fight for pride and fight for Buford High. But to be fair, those two ranked number two aren't facing any slouches at this at 113 is Taven Pissarro, number eight ranked. And at 120, we're going to see Ben Hefner for Chesney, number six. High school sports fans never miss another game. Become a subscriber to the NFHS Network to watch live event coverage, game replays, and highlights from high school sporting events from across the country. Millions of athletes, thousands of games, one destination, NFHSnetwork.com. We are high school. So this is Baker at 113. Pissarro tried to go for a duck, and it looked like he slipped on his feet and just fell over, and Baker's going to capitalize on that and take his top points. A senior against a freshman here. Great experience for Pizarro. And I'd love to see from a coach like John Rents just as invested in this match as he was in the previous one, despite there not being any real, despite the hardware coming home no matter what. Absolutely. Well, Rents is as invested in Chesney as anyone. As we mentioned, 26 years at the school. And he has built this program up from the ground up. Andy Lake, one of his assistants, graduated from Chesney in 2007. And again, the program was launched in 08. So Lake was actually wrestling for Boiling Springs High, even though he was actually attending school at Chesney. Rents also coached Jeremy Bauman, who is their current middle school head coach and varsity assistant. And he won the middle school coach of the year in the state of South Carolina last year. So you just see the investment that Rents has put into everyone who has come under his wing and Taven Pizarro, the latest beneficiary. There's nothing but good energy on this Chesney bench. Seeing daps between Gersten Acker brothers. And as well, we see Ben Hefner in the hole getting ready. Excuse me, on deck getting ready. My goodness, Pizarro! And the switch right back from Baker. That was an interesting combo. Brett, I don't even have a name for what just happened. Well, if you don't, I certainly don't. <laughs> Pizarro struggling with his headpiece. Now Baker's going to try to run that bar again. That was the primary offensive weapon for most of this Buford team, but only one pin on that side, and it didn't come from that move. That's an escape for Pizarro. Just over halfway gone in this match. This is the penultimate match of the duel that Chesney has clinched. And Buford fighting for pride. Isaiah Baker, his last match of his high school career, at least at the duel level. Certainly expect him to be highly competitive in this class of the individuals here in a few weeks. Bit of a risky move by Pizarro. Exposed that second elbow, to, second shoulder rather, to the mat yeah. just to make a move. And it looks like Baker's settling over and it's going to get him to his back. That had
had to be uncomfortable. I mean, look at how that got around his neck like that. Yeah. I think I think Pizarro might just be wearing his headgear a little too loose. Yeah. And it looks like it looks like Rents is gonna adjust it, pull those straps in more. Cause that can be a hazard when it gets around the neck like that. I used to always do my headgear too loose and it would always come undone and I would adjust it mid-match and then junior year I got a hold of myself and just tied it tighter. <laughs> Rain yourself in. So the third period begins. It's 8-2 to two in favor of Baker and Buford. As Pissarro gets double bars in, but Baker brings him over the top. Wow. Great scrambling from these two at 113. Well, oh, how about this from Pizarro? Oh my. Well, I'll tell you what. Baker went for the chesty move, he went for a cement mixer, and Pizarro rolled him over the top. He says, I see that in practice every day. You can't pull that on me. But Baker does get top, so worked out in the end. Major decision territory with a minute 20 to go. Regardless of how this match ends, you've got to love this if you're John Rents. Freshman going up against a senior doing this. Yeah, and I mean, even as a freshman, to be ranked number eight is quite the accomplishment. And to see that pay off against another high-ranked wrestler... One minute left. Yellow Jackets fans getting a bit impatient. Can Baker make any more out of this? Oh my word. That's not going anywhere. Yeah. He didn't have enough leverage. He was too over the top. Not settled back enough on that bar. He was trying to turn Pizarro into a contortionist. Yeah. We could have seen a potentially dangerous there if that bar goes too far up into the, the elbow and forearm area. Look at the Chesney assistant coaches. They're pumping up the Eagle fans. And they have good reason to celebrate. It's a major, major decision for Buford. But a major victory it feels for Taven Pizarro. Yeah. And with one match coming in, Chesney's going to see if they can take the trophy home with a last victory in the books. We're expecting to see Hefner number six for the Chesney Eagles against Mason Knight number two. As we just finally got the weigh in sheets. <laughs> These are actually, it appears, for our next duel coming up, so at least we know we have that in the can ready to go. As they play the final count. And this is exactly who we expected. Mason Knight for Buford, Ben Hefner for Chesney, bringing it home at 120. Buford second ranked in the state in this category. He won or excuse me, he was the state runner-up at 106 last year. He actually wrestled at 106 for each of his first three years and then put on some weight and has been at 120 throughout this season. And like Baker before him, this is his final dual match of his senior year before competing at individuals. As he goes up against Hefner, who is ranked sixth in this class. And it might be bittersweet for these two seniors, Baker and Knight, to go out, you know, in second place. Wrestling is kind of a second place is a, isn't always a win mentality, but hopefully individuals can be there full time to shine. Look at this by Hefner. Hefner trying to send out Mason Knight a slightly different way than he was hoping for. He picks up the first two points. <laughs> Garrett Plyler had many good things to say about his seniors. Baker Knight and the like saying their leadership from last season, a year that there were some injuries and some things didn't really go the Yellow Jackets way, they really helped everybody buy in and believe that they were capable of getting here this year. Yeah, well you can see Mason Knight there with that shoulder brace on and 
Not to say that Hefner is targeting it, but he's going for a cradle on that side. As great roll from uh, from Knight, but no dice on the escape. Four points have belonged to Hefner right now as the first period dwindles. Hefner's got to be got to be careful with trapping that leg like he did at the end of the period. If he does that for more than 10 seconds, he'll be called on a penalty and a point will be given to Knight. But wasn't enough time in the period for that to warrant anything. Final reminder that today's game is also available for all subscribers via the NFHS Network Live mobile app for Apple and Android devices. Download the app from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store today to start watching live games wherever you are. The Chesney Eagle champ companion is the companion of a big mat return for Hefner. It seems like they've got all the swag in the world coming out of this. Maybe too much sauce though, as Hefner called for potentially dangerous. He certainly has the energy right now. Right with the rollover. Good scramble. Halfway point of the match. This might be, no, no stalemate as now Hefner gets back over. He's got that leg trapped again, like I said. He's got to be careful. He lets it out. After maintaining excellent control for the most part, Knight has not scored. It is six to nothing. And now locking hands called. Second technical violation after the potentially dangerous call, so it, it does give Mason Knight a point. Yeah, you can see just a little bit of rawness from Hefner. Not wrestling dangerous or recklessly, just a little more physical than some refs might like. And locking hands, that's in folk style, always a mistake. crowd for this last match has grown substantially as the 3A fans have entered the building. A lot from nearby Gilbert. Certainly anticipate seeing some West Oak fans as well as the Warriors go for the three-peat. We'll have that for you not long after the conclusion of this one. 12 o'clock, the official start time. We'll see if it ends up turning over quite as quickly. Last year we had a bit of an extra buffer. I believe one o'clock was the start time the last few years. But stay with us, Class 3A ought to be fun between the powerhouse of West Oak and not exactly a Cinderella in the greater scheme of things in Gilbert. They've won four of the last six lower state crowns, but they were certainly a Cinderella in their own mind this year. We'll tell you all about that on our next broadcast. Well, anyone going against West Oak is an underdog. That is true. Same can be said of the East Side Eagles, who will be one of the combatants in the 4A duel at 3 o'clock against Lugoff Elgin. Somerville versus Fort Mill is our 5A nightcap at 5 o'clock. Hope you stay with us all day here on the NFHS Network for coverage of all four of those state championship duels. Final minute 20 at Class 2A. Chesney has clinched it. Only a matter of what the final score will be as Ben Hefner continues to harass Mason Knight and tries to send him off with a loss. And he cuts him too. Hefner, a desperate double shot attempt. No setup. You know that things have gotten desperate when the number two ranked wrestler at a weight class isn't doing a setup for shots. He just wants this to look prettier on paper. He has 44 seconds with which to work, and he's down six. What can Knight do? Hefner says, just let me hang on. 
close to something. Hefner rolled out before the near fall could begin. Almost caught Hefner in a weird MacGyvered headlock there off the shot attempt, but... That's two, but it's still a four-point deficit for Knight. Chesney fans are on their feet. They're ready to rush the mat. Eight seconds. Hefner trying to put three more on the board for the Eagles to tie this one up, and he does. 39-19, to 19, your final score, and for the first time in program history, the Chesney Eagles are champions of South Carolina wrestling. 26 years in the making for Rents. Started in 2008 in his own program here, and to see it all pay off, to see canceling that softball scrimmage pay off, it was all worth it. As I bet you there's going to be good eats at the, at the Gerstenacker house tonight. I think so. What a duel that was, Tyler. That was a lot of great action. Not a lot of pins. We only saw three. Matches almost always went the distance, and there were just some excellent combats. I agree. A surprising lack of pins. We expected it to be maybe a little further apart on paper. A 20-point win is still pretty big when it comes to state finals, but Chesney capitalized, like I said, on those cement mixer and bar combos up top. They did great work with the head and arm position as well. Beautiful high crotch technique, and I think that uh, really that dominance in neutral is what pushed them away from these Buford Yellow Jackets. A great display, though, for Buford. No doubt. Mason Knight talked about wanting to put Buford on the map this week, and certainly the Yellow Jackets have done that. Again, this was their first time ever getting to state, so now they can say that this particular team has gone farther than any Yellow Jacket squad has in history. Of course, the same can be said for Chesney, who, again, is here for only the second time ever and wins it for the first time ever. Been a long time coming for John Rents and his squad, but they're the number one ranked team in the state for a reason, and they showed it today. 